welcome everyone again to Between the Lines. And now I'm going to pass it over to Robert and Zelda. Thank you, Christy. Welcome, everybody. I'm speaking to you all from the uh, lands of the Lenape people, also known as Manhattan, New York. And it's great to be with you all again in this conversation. I'm really delighted to be talking with Zelda today. So our flow, I think, is going to be uh, we're going to have a conversation, but um, we also want to open up to folks for their questions, which you can drop into the chat. And then if there's space, we'll open it up and invite people to come off audio and ask their, ask any questions um, that they want to directly. But it's really um, a chance for us all to um, be in real conversation and dialogue together. Dialogue coming from that ancient Greek words of uh, dia and logos of, through the sacred word. Um, and so how do we not just use this time together to be sort of watching people, two people having a conversation and have it as sort of something entertaining, but really to be in a place where we can create new meaning together within ourselves and uh, within this circle together. So with all of that said, Zelda, how are you? I'm good, Robert. Thanks for having me here and uh, really excited to be with everybody and to focus on um, what I'd love to share, and it's all about weaving communities together. Tell, tell us a little bit about it. So um, I had a vision over 12 years ago to create a seven foot uh, dream catcher. And it was just like a little, um, it wasn't like a dare, but I met somebody up in Alaska that had a seven foot drum and I just chuckled. I says, why well, make big ones? But I never made one seven foot. And lo and behold, after 12 years later, uh, they turned into more than just a dream catcher. What they are is uh, sacred geometry. There's thousands of crystals on them. And they're healing, healing um, uh, sensitive uh portals some people call them or story circles and it's about you learning your own stories uh, within the self that has been holding you or grasping you or or in a place of uh dwelling grieving sadness and every time that uh people come to my home and they step in there, they have to step out a little bit because it can be like a little overwhelming. And then they step in and they feel like it's home. It's like somebody has felt them. Somebody has expressed their feelings and supporting them. So as of right now, after 12 years, I have 25 of them. And uh, I'm on the second series now, which is called um, uh, the... Uh, dream dancers, the skywalkers and the sky dancers. And that is where the Eastern tradition and the uh, uh, Native American meet, which is a we. Uh, the first 21 are the, the ones that where Eagle met Condor, where North meets South. And now we're in this circle of uh, times and, and what's going on in, in the world and how so many things are separate and so many things are hurting in so many ways. And what part of me that I can support just maybe just one little, one little portion. And uh, that came to me is how do we weave communities together? So this was a vision I had four years ago and making like 15 foot hoops, but we all come together in, in whatever community that I'm working with, um, we come together in that community. We pray together. We weave together. We we tell stories on uh, where we're at, and it comes all in into that beautiful circle where it's all held. And the wind takes the um, the prayers out out to Creator, out to the uh, world, out to the star beings, and further. So 
that's that is a little tiny bit of my vision. <laughs> mm, beautiful. Mm. And um, maybe you can help us all as we're listening to you explain the significance of the hoop and significance of the dream catcher. Mm. So um, I just want to acknowledge just a little bit um, because we always have the Thanksgiving address. uh, It's all about what comes before all words. And I just want to acknowledge each one of you uh, as the people here. And I want to acknowledge Creator for supporting all of us so we can all listen with uh, good ears and a good mind and have our hearts open. And where we are uh, being supported through Creator as it runs through our hands each and every time that we use our hands, these hands, if we can hold them as these are Creator's hands that creates all that is in our world. So we also give thanks to the waters and all the mammals and all the little beings uh, that are in the waters to the mammals all the way down to the to the little uh, wiggly ones to the grass and to the um, we also give thanks to uh, the bushes and the berries and the fruits and the vegetables it's amazing on uh, how everything is this full circle of life and it goes back to the hoop how is it we start from the beginning, but there is no end. It's a keep continuation. And that's what um, the Thanksgiving address is. Even all to going from the slithery ones to the pollinators, to the birds and the winged ones, and also to the four leggeds. And as we uh, look up the standing ones and how the standing one help us in so many ways, where it comes into the four directions and the four winds, where it goes up into the grandmother moon and brother sun and all the little stars. And my grandmother used to always say all the time, one star might just twinkle so beautifully. And that star that catches your eye, that's you. And she wears you so proudly around her. She calls it her necklace. And each one of us is connected in that full circle of life. And it's in that hoop. And then we go up to our ancestors and the old ones and the ancient ones and the great mystery. And we pile and pile and pile and pile all our gratefulness and thankfulness up to creator. For what we sense, we smell, we see, we hear. We taste, we feel. And that is what the hoop is all about. The circle. And the vision is, is how do we mend the hoop? I know I'm just one one small little person doing my little thing here, but there's so many other people that are doing the same thing, holding that prayer. And allowing maybe maybe these prayers are taken into the four directions or the four winds. And just maybe it might touch someone that is asking for whatever it is, for them to see things differently. So the hoop to me is where we meet and each knot represents an aspect of each one of our lives. So as we are going around and we're weaving and weaving and weaving, what does it do? It condenses all the way into the middle, which actually is from where we are as the elders, it goes all the way to the seven generations. And the more that we can hold that for the next seven generations and give them the experience, not the hope, because if we just hold prayer then they'll be able to experience prayer. They'll be able to experience the ceremonies. They'll be able to experience what it is that turns them on of why they are here. What is their expression and how is it they are so creative? So every knot, what my uh, aunt used to say when we used to do a lot of beadwork and things, 
we used to tie and tie and tie and tie. And she say, look at, it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to your heart. And that's what the weavings are uh, for me, is even though they're seven foot, it takes me over 80 hours to make them because I'm there and I'm singing and I'm praying, thoughts come in my mind, but it's not only my thoughts because if I'm weaving all of this, it's all of the collective. It's all that continuation of every individual that is here upon this earth. And if it comes to me, then it must be something internally inside of me, but also externally that someone else is connecting with. So then I take that and I take that in and I love that part of me. I love that aspect as I'm weaving. So they become more than a dream catcher. The dream catcher, you see them all over in different stores and different native stores and things like that. Um, the dream catcher is to stop the bad dreams of coming in. So what it is, uh, there's a bead there that represents the bad dream that gets caught in the web. So you know that it didn't come, that the dream catcher was actually doing the work. And then when the sunlight hits and the feathers are there and it just blows it away, it blows it and allows it to disappear. But they used to hang them a long, long time ago on the cradle boards and the baby would look through that little bit of hole and that's how they travel back to spirit and back to the, and back to their their human body, their, their body here on the mother. So they have become um, more than just a dream catcher, Robert. They have become a circle of, of a continuation of prayers for people to express whatever it is. And when you're in the presence of them, um, each person feels something differently. They might even feel the culture coming out because some represents different cultures and uh, they can feel that they can feel home and that's why you hear a lot of times that they feel like they're home thank you for sharing that zelda so much so much beauty in what you just shared with us thank you i'm curious if as you're working with them now if you're noticing any particular prayers that are coming forward that feel really fit for these times um what has happened is the skywalkers and the sky dancers what they are they're the ancestors that have um they're in that position of giving us information and um, the first, these next four that I just uh, came through and that had been created, it became the creation story. And that creation story is about how Sky Woman uh, and our, and our uh, story, um, how Sky Woman was pregnant at the time. And, and this is where we're looking at right now is how is the influence of how we look at things and how we can bring it forward. Do we bring it in the judgment? Do we bring in fear? Do we bring in a place of, of where we can just stand in the presence and not sway any way, but just hold the ability of what you want to envision for the, uh, the mother? and for the people. So Sky Woman, um, what it was is uh, she was pregnant at the time and the tree, the tree of uh, life or the tree of knowledge, I call it. Uh, um, uh, she was um, wanting, wanting uh, some root and you're not supposed to touch any of that root. But her husband, um, she kept on insisting, so her husband took a little bit of root 
and the tree fell over after he did that and created a hole. And what happened was she went to get more of the root and she saw the hole. She was top heavy and she was looking down. And when she was looking down, she kept leaning and leaning and she was holding on a branch and all of the tree of life has every part of the seed on, that she that is on there that you see on the uh, mother right now. And as she was looking down, she fell through the hole and she held on to all of those seeds. And that is what I feel like if we hold on to the seeds of what it is that we hold in the prayer for things to shift and change. We can't, we cannot be in a place of reprimanding or, or judging. All I do know is that everybody was born from a mother. And may they come in oh, being the victim or they come in being the person of prayer, creations of different things. We all have that ability to possibly might see some beauty, some way, somehow in whatever each one of us are doing. And this, this, the series um, of the sky woman coming down um, the turtle, it, it's a long story, but the turtle uh, was there and uh, the geese caught her and and uh, placed her on the back of the turtle after dirt got put on there by the muskrat. And um, she danced, she danced and she spread the seeds and this is how it became Turtle Island. So what the hoops are to me is the one that I did uh, create instead of being the tree of life. I feel like tree of life is patterns, stories, programs, what it is that we keep um, doing over and over again. But the thing of uh, what creator said to me, this is going to be the tree of knowledge. The tree of knowledge is going to be where we are able to tap into our ancestors so we can change and make a difference instead of what was. And I don't know if I answered your question or not, but I started going on and on tonight. <laughs> I don't even remember what my question was, but I just, everything you've shared has just been so perfect. Um, I can feel uh, the transmission, your words and the, the prayer of them. I love when you're talking about the tree and um, the tree of knowledge in my own tradition in Ireland. Um, to be a druid, Celtic druid is druvid is one who knows the trees, one who has the wisdom of the, the oak tree. That idea that uh, the seeds and the trees uh, hold uh, the remembering and that we need uh, for our future and our present. Yeah. In that tree of um, knowledge, <clears throat> there are small little hoops <clears throat> that are five, five inches, which represent the first hoop in the first 21. And the first hoop represents inspiration. And um, it was intention in the beginning. And all of a sudden, creator said to me, intention could be from imagination and ego, but inspiration is from me. So the first 21 from the fourth one to the 20th one has these small round circles that are, that is the same imprint of the seven foot one okay. and they travel through all through the first 20 uh the 20 and now they're starting to carry into the next um series 
And what is on the tree of knowledge is the um, cabal, the tree of life. And it's the symbols of the circles, how it comes up. Um, and like I said, each one represents a different culture. Like people will pick out things that they'll see and they'll be like, oh, that's a, that's a part of my culture, you know, and I hear it all the time. And uh, that's, that's the sweetness of it is because that's what we're doing. That's my vision is to weave all cultures together. Yeah. Beautiful. So while you're doing this beautiful prayer work and creating this um, this medicine for who knows who's going to see it and, and be with it. But, you know, the world is happening all around us and there's many hard, hard, um, hard things happening right now in our world. How do you stay, how do you stay inspired um, through these times? How do you stay well and uplifted? Well, my uh, friend came over and she was talking about what was just going on with Israel and how old well the fight is. And she was getting really scared. And, you know, she's going on and on. And I says, you know, I says, first of all, don't, don't be in fear. What it is, is being aware if we have awareness, then we're able to take care of ourselves and the needs to prepare. And if we prepare in whatever way, we aren't going into the fear, but you never know what could happen in you know the next moment. We don't know. And I'm not saying go out and buy buy tons of stuff and this and that. It's the awareness. So what you're at for me, I actually uh feel the energy as it's rising and dropping. And I know that for me, I have such a strong relationship, which I call the boss or creator. And I know if I'm supposed to go, it'll happen. And if I'm not, then I'm gonna keep continuing doing the work. Nothing at this point in my life is swaying me. It's like I'm on a mission and this is what creator gifted me to do. And I've been held for these 12 years for so long and so many things have transpired building my relationship and knowing that I am so tight that if creator wants to take me out, then that's good. You know, uh, I'm good with that. Uh, so I just keep on doing the work and, and when people come and fear and everything, I listen. And then I like another person said, ah, we're just going to be all right. I says, maybe we won't. Maybe we won't because what you're doing is shutting down and being ignorant then. So what is it that you can do <clears throat> to follow the threads to keep supporting you instead of shutting down and make it like there's nothing there, nothing going on. I'm just going to keep doing my life, go to work, whatever they do. And it's the awareness that I look at because every morning before I start, I give a thanks that I am here. I am here one more day. Creator put me here one more day to do the, to do what it is. And the way I give thanks, I, I always say, I am so thankful that I'm here one more day to be in service of what it is that you want me to do. My hands are creator's hands. And what is it that you want me to create from this point on? And it might be cooking, it might be waving to somebody, it might be doing my work, it might be doing gardening or picking up all my black walnuts that nuts that are falling all on the ground in my driveway <laughs> yeah. yeah i love what you're sharing about <clears throat> so often even when we're living a life infused with spirit that there can still be this separation right this is my spiritual life and then there's everything else 
and you're speaking to that it's it's just all one life um, not spiritual not a, it's just one life um that's infused with this and whether you're like baking bread or picking up uh, the walnuts or um you're you're working with the the hoops um it's all sacred yeah yeah and you know we do slip i'm just like anybody else i slip and i go and what it is i go oops there it is <laughs> <laughs> and the thing of it is um <clears throat> i was so blessed <clears throat> for uh 30 years i drove school bus and mm. they're the ones that made me real mm. Because they're the ones, those children allowed me to be, I would shift the hat just like that because you needed to. Yeah. And, but there was so much joy. There was a lot of aggravation, believe me. But my little mind was, because they always try to play games with you all the time. And so I always thought to myself, so how can I play this game to win, but not to beat them? (laughs) And that's the way I look at sometimes, you know, a lot of things come at you, you know, as much as you don't want to play the game, but we as humans, we do play games. There's manipulation, there's judgment. So how is it? It's like each person that I'm with is internally, I have this little giggle and smile and I'm like, oh, here we go. (laughs) And so I am so thankful for all those children that I had on my buses all those years because it brought me to who I am now. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. Life is fun. And you have to experience it all. As much Mm -hmm. as it's really hard, how is it that we can... Uh, look at it as yeah I'm right in the midst of the muck and and the, the heartache and the grieving sorrow whatever it may be but there's always that little spark that twinkles your eye and makes you have just a tiny smile and know that okay there can be a little balance whatever we go through and that yeah. is the circle because if we didn't, if we kept staying in our spiritual body and being home and and being in a place of uh, joy all the time, then how can you experience all emotions? Just like those little kids, how they scream, cry, and then all of a sudden they're laughing, giggling. It's like they, they have little switches, click, 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 click. And I like yeah. following that. It's like, how did they do that? I want to know what they know. <laughs> yeah. Instead of us. I, <laughs> I want to remember what I used to know. When I was <laughs> yeah. Um, well, maybe we'll uh, see if there's anybody has any questions to drop in the chat for Zelda. Based on all the beautiful wisdom she's been sharing with us about her work, her vision, prayer that's arising in the world. So as those questions may or may not come in, Zelda, I'm uh, I'm curious for you, The what do you see as the biggest obstacles to this sort of collective belonging that you're, that you're weaving? I, you ask that question i i'm not feeling obstacles Mm -hmm. it's like i really like challenges yeah right and and sometimes when they look like they can be hard i do the best i can to get through them Mm -hmm. and sometimes i might even ask for help who knows I, you know, I can't do everything. So I ask for help. So weaving, weaving communities together, weaving communities together. And that has been 
vision, like I said, four years ago, how can I do that? And so when you said obstacle, it's like, it's not an obstacle. It's like a challenge to me. And then the challenge is, is expressing the vision and seeing if anybody would like to, to, um, to find out how is it that we can weave communities together. So the vision, the vision that I have is uh, to go to different communities uh, and then, and then do uh, like, it's, it's all about recycling. And what I took was an old trampoline hoop and I created a dream dream catcher with a seven foot hoop so you could walk through it. So it's like, it goes like a half moon. And what is, what I would like to do is go to communities and um, share how to work, how to speak, how to tell stories. I want to hear what you know. I want to experience what you know and create the prayers as we are making it. And um, so I experienced one outside. I did it out in my yard and a few people have been seeing it lately. And it's the vision is to take the elder the oldest one, and then go down the line all the way to the seventh generations um, and to bring that forth into the communities. So it doesn't have to be a, a 15-footer. It can be a smaller one. Um, but the teachings will come as we weave together, not just from me, but from each individual through their stories. Um so that's been a little bit, maybe a, a challenge for me is to um, share with people what the vision is. And I don't know if a lot of people understand it. Maybe I don't understand it. Maybe I'm not clear enough yet. Um, but uh, that's one of the things. And the other, the other is to write the second book um, on uh, the whole the whole teachings of everything that I learned in these 12 years as I was creating them. There's so much that came in. And the one elder that I was with uh, for the longest time, uh, she says, you can talk on just number one for the rest of your life with all those teachings that you learned. So these they're the two challenges right now. Um, yeah. but you know, it's all good. It's all good because maybe, you know, I look at it, is it really a challenge or I haven't caught up with it yet? Creators just saying not yet, not yet. Maybe. Yeah. So I don't put my, I don't, I don't like beating myself up. It's like, Okay, well, we'll just keep on doing what we're doing. And every day is a new day and new experiences. And maybe that's what I'm doing right now is collecting everything. Yeah. Maybe my last question to you uh, before we end it's some prayer or some practice together. I'm curious, um, you know, this 12-year period has clearly been a very special period. Um, what what sort of enabled you to to receive that that inspiration that you talked about twelve years ago? Were you were you practicing? Really focused on this? You're like, please, Great Spirit, give me you know, show me, point me in the direction of my of my work and my purpose. Help me create uh, something beautiful in this world. Or were you you're watching Netflix on the couch one day and then all of a sudden it just like struck you like lightning. What was it like? I was up in Alaska. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was waiting for my friend to get done working. And yeah. this woman comes into the little restaurant that I was just sitting there having a tea. In the meantime, 
I just got back on um, uh, a tour is doing the glaciers and this big, huge glacier heart was presented right there and was so blue and so beautiful. And I was just so amazed by it. And I was just sitting there in the restaurant and this woman comes in and she says, hi. And she told me your name. And I says, hi. And she goes, I'm a drum maker. You must know me. And I'm like, no, I don't know you. And she says to me, I'm the one that uh, created the seven foot drum and I go all around the world. And that's when I said to her, huh, maybe I'll do a seven foot dream catcher and I'll ride around the world with you. That's the seed that came in. And then when I got home, because of my little thought, it was like, maybe I'll get a welder to uh, make a seven foot hoop. But you know what I did? The way my mind works is like, oh, well, if I make one, somebody else might want it. So I'll tell them to make three. And that's what opened up 12, 21, 12. And um, so the the first one came in, you know, just thinking I was just going to make a, a dream catcher. And uh, the second one, I was on a bus doing a um, field trip in Williamstown. And all of a sudden, I felt like I was gliding across the road and I ended up in a church. And that's when I got the vision of number two and partially number three. And I heard... This is what you're going to do for 1221 shift. When we did that ceremony, at one point, something pulled on the back of my skirt and says, start drumming now. So in December, your doors are all closed. And I was in this church, a round church with a dome. And I had four separate doors. And when I got pulled up, all the doors opened up. They were all locked. And that's when I knew this was way bigger than me. Yeah. And uh, there's story after story that goes on. The fourth one, they asked me to quit my job. And I ended in retirement place on another field trip. See, I tell you, that bus was real. <laughs> I did, it was a magic school bus. I got everything from yeah. the information from a school bus. <laughs> I can hear it. I can hear a children's book in here. Zelda's magical school bus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Being kind. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. That's truly like the beginning of how it started, and then it just went on and on from there. Lesson, teachings. Ah. Uh, Frustration. Okay. <laughs> no, not <Humaning>. another clue. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are we're almost at our time. I'm wondering if I could uh invite you to um close us out with a couple of moments of prayer or practice in some way, if you feel called to that. I can. Yeah, thank you. So as we take our deep breaths, we breathe in and we breathe out. And we thank Christy for the beginning of the prayer. How she talked about the relaxation. But I would like you just to feel your feet on the mother and go back into the womb of that mother, how she rocks you and holds you and the pulsating of her heart washes you, cleanses you, clears you, all thoughts as it runs right down through into her and she collects all of your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings. And she rocks it so gently and she lifts you up and she rises you right up through the feet, the ankles, the calves, the knees, the thighs, and the hips. And it meets into the heart. And our connection to creator drops down through because she 
creator sees the heart open so gently and sweet. And the blessings all come down through your mind, through your eyes, through your ears, through the smells, through the tastes. Goes down through the throat, hitting every vertebrae and lands into the heart, just like this and gives each one of the kiss. And that kiss is that beautiful star that is inside of you of whatever your gifts are. And may they shine out in whatever way your hands that holds the creation of your life that all that is. Blessings to everyone and may the eagle wings wrap around you and support you on your journey, not only here now, but through your dreams. And may those visions touch your ears so you can hear the ancestors whispering as your heart pulse of excitement of all that love. So, Thank you so much, Zelda. Thank you for being with us and sharing all that you've shared of yourself. It's been such a privilege just to witness you. Thank, uh, thank you. you, everybody, for being with us. There's Zelda's doing beautiful work at Kerpalu. It's all the information's online. Uh, there's lots more great conversations coming ahead. Thank Journey you. well, everybody. <laughs>